Highly detailed hard surface models have been the holy grail for many aspiring 3D artists. To create a beauty render of hard surface models like this with bevel edges in a polygon 3D modeling software would typically take hours of concepting, 3D modeling, and a solid understanding of proper topology. What if there was a faster way to concept and create complex 3D models and achieve great renders like this in minutes and without having to painstakingly create proper topology. If you're a bit skeptical about this, I get it, but I want to share the truth behind how these 3D models were actually created. So this is how my final renders came out. But this was my topology. What's going on, you 3D modeling beasts? This is JL Musi, and today I'm excited to bring you my top three 3D modeling updates for Maya 2024 and how they've been a game changer in my 3D modeling workflow. And as a bonus, I'll even show you a little known Maya node that made these renders possible. These Maya 2024 3D modeling updates have allowed me to create complex 3D models quickly without having to worry about topology. This video is sponsored by Autodesk and they granted me early access to test Maya 2024. It was entirely up to me which tools made the list and I'm sharing my honest opinion on them and how I'm incorporating them into my workflow. Without further ado, let's get into the countdown. Number three, unsmooth mesh. This brand new feature is one that you might find pretty handy. It lets you decrease the number of subdivisions on any high resolution mesh that's been smoothed using Catmull Clark. Even better, you can reverse the subdivision of more complex meshes while keeping the shape and volume intact. This can come in handy when you're sculpting and want to create a lower resolution version of a mesh that's been smoothed and subdivided. It can even be a lifesaver when you apply a smooth to your model and accidentally delete the history. Baking in that smooth, which makes it almost impossible to go back and make modeling changes. Number two, retopologize improvements. In Maya 2024, the retopology tools have been greatly improved. First, the new feature preservation option lets you keep specific details of your input mesh while retopologizing. This includes preserving features like hard edges, edges by angles, and user-defined edge component tags. You can control or guide the resulting edge flow of your retopologized output mesh. Here you'll see me use the retopology tool on this hard surface model, and I'm telling Maya to preserve the hard edges. This gives me a quick base shape that I can go then further refine using traditional 3D modeling tools. Incorporating this retopology workflow saves me quite a bit of time from having to create a clean mesh from scratch. Finally, the revamped mesh pre-check option lets you scan your input mesh for any potential issues or problems with certain options that may cause undesirable results. Maya does a pretty good job at providing tips to help you troubleshoot any issues. Here on this torso, the mesh pre-check told me that there was an issue and told me the exact command to run on the mesh cleanup tool. After running that exact setting on the cleanup tool, Maya let me retopologize my model with no issue. The added symmetry support is perfect for characters, creatures, and hard surface objects that need to be mirrored with topology on both sides. You can use controls for axes and direction, taking into account world and object space, as well as the orientation and pivot offsets. While it didn't do a perfect job on this torso, it did a lot of the heavy lifting for me. At this point, I can keep tweaking the retopology settings to get a better result or make the mesh live and retopologize certain parts by hand using the Quadraw tool. Number one, Boolean tool set. Maya 2024 has made some considerable improvements to the Boolean tool set. Now 3D artists have even more control when they're adding and editing new input objects in the Boolean stack. 
As an ambitious and overconfident 3D artist, I was determined to bully in so many details into this mesh, push the limits of the tool that I thought I would push it past its breaking point. But the devs at Autodesk proved quite resilient and taught me a lesson about humility because the Boolean tool set took much more punishment than I initially thought. It didn't actually budge or break, not even once. And I was surprised by the number of Boolean operations you could actually stack onto one mesh. Here's a quick breakdown of how I created these two hard surface models shown at the beginning of the video. I was able to start with very basic shapes and quickly add to the complexity by introducing more meshes to unite or subtract from my mesh. To add a new mesh to your Boolean stack, you could simply drag it from the outliner or hit the Add Selected Objects button. The Boolean toolset offers individual visibility settings for each mesh added to the stack, providing more visibility options as your mesh becomes more complex. I found it particularly useful to use a split panel view to isolate only the resulting Boolean mesh on one panel to clearly see your final shape. After I completed my first concept, I simply duplicated the mesh to bake in that first version. I kept adding and refining to my second model with the Boolean tool set to quickly create a second version of my model. You can start getting a sense of how quick this process can go using this workflow. Working time for each model was close to 10 minutes and it would have taken me much longer than using traditional 3D modeling workflows that heavily rely on solid topology. So how was I able to get those renders with round edges with this type of mesh? That was the work of the rounded corners just shader that shapes out with Arnold. It does an amazing job at taking a 3D model with sharp corners and adding those rounded corners at render time. You can control the radius in the shader to adjust the roundness of your edges. After I was done setting up the shader, I slapped on a plastic preset to the AI standard surface, rendered my images using some basic render passes. And this was the result. So that's it for today's video on my top 3D modeling updates for Maya 2024. While these new updates don't eliminate the need to manually create a 3D model with proper topology, now you have many more options to add speed to your workflow, whether you need a production ready mesh or a quick 3D concept. I definitely see myself using these new 3D tools in a variety of ways, including creating blockouts, combining both automatic and manual retopology, and quickly sending clients polished renders of 3D concepts before actually introducing proper topology. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought about these new Maya 2024 3D modeling tools and how you think you'll implement them into your 3D modeling workflow. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and smash the like button to let me know to make more videos like this. Until we meet again, folks, I will catch you next time.